Shalom and good evening, our brethren, wherever you are. We welcome you to this wonderful, the sweet hour of prayer. And we believe you have been kept well in the presence of the Lord. I'm your host today, Pastor Mary Nyokonyo of River of Life Christian Fellowship International. Together with my fellow pastors, we thank God because we, are, we have been kept also well in the hands of God and ready to bring the word of God. I believe the servants of God are very ready, much ready to give us the insight of the word of God. We have been walking alongside with the book of Revelation and to date, the man of God is going to speak about the church of Smyrna, as I can call it. I don't know how you can pronounce it on your with your own pronunciation, I pronounce it as minor. God is going to do something great in your life. Last week, the man of God spoke about the church at Pergamum, and we were really blessed. Christ, the word of God, we were really blessed. And I'm believing that today, you are also going to be blessed. We are also going to be blessed together with the word of God. Hallelujah. And with us, I know we have a congregation of people that are ready also to receive together with you online. Even in our studios, we have people who also decided to receive together with us. So we welcome you wherever you are. You can also send your comment, write a comment, how you are receiving us and where you are receiving us from. God is going to bless you. And also do not forget to share with your friends. Do not forget to share. Welcome somebody also. Tell a friend to tell a friend that Nyokonyo Studios are live and sound to bring us the word of God tonight. God is going to bless you. So I want to take this great opportunity to welcome the man of God who will lead us with a word of prayer and proceed with the word of God unto us. God bless you. If you have any question, Ask your question, and the man of God is going to respond to your question tonight. God bless you. Welcome, servant of God, Pastor Harrison. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. It is a privilege and honor to be in the presence of the Almighty God. Since last week, I believe the Lord has been doing great things in our life. Thank you. And I believe he will still continue to do it until the very end. Let us pray Father in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Let us pray Father in the name of Jesus. We come before you this evening to thank you and to appreciate you, Father. We are just vessel in your hands, O Lord. Lord, as we sit down here to share this word with your people, we pray that Lord you are going to magnify your word give us the utterance that we may speak according to your will and allow the Holy Spirit of God to bring the conviction of the Holy One of Israel in our hearts Father we exalt your name because you are the only lamb of God that was sacrificed on the cross you died and took away our sins O Lord so Lord we acknowledge you as our savior and our redeemer we surrender to you this 
evening. We surrender the studio before you, Father. We surrender the instrument before you, Lord. All the technicalities, we bring them under the authority and the blood of Jesus. We know we declare the presence of God upon each and every vessel. Have your way from the beginning to the very end, our Father. If there is anything that can hinder your will, my God, we ask you to have mercy on us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Father, we, we, we take authority and have the uh, command and destroy every territorial powers. Every authority of darkness and confusing spirit we command you to live in the name of Jesus. And so we pray that this word is going to be established in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I want to begin by saying this. God is God of revelation Mungu ni Mungu wa ufunuo, and he speaks progressively through his word. Na kwa pitia kwa neno lake. When Jesus the Messiah was still on earth Yesu, duniani, he proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom to the people. Alitangaza inchili ya ufaume kwa watu. And so that Gospel Na hiyo, has not yet ended. Haija koma bado. When he ascended on high, paju, he gave to the twelve apostles this message. Alipeana kwa mitume kumina wawili ujumbe huu. So that they can take over after his ascension. Ili wakachukulie pale baada ya kupaa kwa ke. And so this message has to be proclaimed until the very end. Na hivo inchili hii inapazwa kutangazwa hadi uh, mwisho wa dahari. Why are we speaking so much about the church. Because the church is so key here in the plans and the purpose of God here on earth. And God has revealed his plans and purpose to the church. And so the church needs to elaborate and make the whole world to understand the will and the purpose of God. They need to understand their position and what God says about them. Anytime the church is straying from the purpose and the will of God, we see Jehovah sending a warning to them and reminding them who they are and what they are supposed to be doing. Every church that we are reading from the book of Revelation, it was given a specific instruction and the revelation from Jesus Christ. And so when John is giving this revelation, he is only the mouthpiece of Jesus the Messiah so that the church can comprehend 
comprehend what Jesus is saying about them. Ili kanisa likaweze kutafakari kile Yesu anazungumza kuwahusu wao. That is why in the book of Matthew. Na ndio sababu katika kitabu cha Mathayo. He said I will build my church. Anasema nitalijenga kanisa langu. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Na malango ya kusimu hayatafaulu. So Jesus is in the process of building the church. Basi Yesu hapa yuko katika wa uh, katika uh, hali ya kulijenga kanisa. The church that will portray his glory. Basi kanisa litakalo dihirisha utukufu wake. The church that will reveal the character and the nature of God. Basi kanisa litakalo funua tabia na asilia ya Mungu. The church that will be tested and overcome the world. Kanisa litakalo jari because that is the church that Jesus Christ is building right now. It is not an ordinary church. It is a church that has been glorified with him in heavenly places. So as we talk about the church, this is so significant to me. Because we are in the mind of God and God is watching us so closely on everything that we are undertaking. And so as we looked at the church of Pergamos, we saw how Jesus was speaking about the compromising of this church with the world again. They were not learning out of him, but they were again learning from this man called uh, uh, Balaam. And so we saw the conspiracy of Balaam entering into the church secretively so that he can defile the church and turn it away from the will of God. So that he can cause the just to go against the will of God the Father. And today we are talking about the church of Smyrna. And this church is a church that Jesus commanded it very well. And so when revealing to John the uh, the Baptist revealing to John the Revelator and John also giving to the messenger, the pastor of that church. He begins by saying this and to the angel of the church of Smyrna write the word angel there shows the messenger of God. The one who has been given the message to go and deliver. This thing says the first and the last. John is reminding them that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He describes him before this church so that they can get to understand the one that has sent this message to them. He is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the end of everything. Describing who Jesus Christ is. 
nane. He does not end from there. Ah, malizi tu pale. He says who was dead. Ana sema yeye aliyekufa. And came to life. Na akarejea katika uhai. He's telling them. Ana wambia. That the Jesus I'm talking about. Kwamba huyu Yesu na yesungumzia. He died one day. Alikufa siku moja. And then he was brought back to life. Akarejeshwa kwa uzima. And he lives again. Na bado anaishi tena. He resurrected and ascended to the Father. Alifufuka na kupaa kwa Baba. And he seated at the right hand of the Father, the place of authority. Na ameketi katika mkono wa kulia wa Baba maeneo ya mamlaka. So in other word we are preaching the Jesus that is alive. Na kwa maneno mengine basi tunamhubiri Yesu aliye na aliye hai leo. He is the Alpha and Omega. Yeye ni Alpha na Omega. He died yes but he resurrected from the dead. Alikufa ndiyo lakini pia tena alifufuka kutoka kwa wafu. So we are worshiping the true and the living God who lives forever. Na basi tunamwabudu Mungu wa kweli na anayeishi katika umilele. Why is Jesus introducing himself through this letter to the people? Ah basi kwa nini Yesu anajitambulisha mwenyewe kupitia katika barua kwa watu wake so that the people can get to know who he is and the reason as per why he's going to speak after his introduction ah ili watu wakaweze kumjua yeye ni nani na sababu inayomfanya yeye kusungumza baada ya watu hawa he says i came back to life anasema nili kuwa nilirejea nilireje tena katika uzima after the death baada ya kufa so jesus christ died yesu alikufa but on the third day he resurrected from the death and seated ascended to the father na siku ya tatu akafufuka toka kwa wafu na akapaa kwenda kwa baba verse 9 he says msari wa 9 anasema i know your works anajua kazi yenu tribulation mateso yenu and poverty na ule umaskini but you are rich lakini ninyi ni tajiri and i know the blasphemy of those who say they are jewish and are not na najua dihaka za hawa wanaosema wao ni wayahudi ni hali sio but are the synagogue of satan na wao ni wenye sinagogi ya setani jesus is saying yesu anasema i know your works as a church of smyrna najua matendo yenu kama kanisa la smyrna and the tribulation that you are going through na mateso mnayopitia ninyi this was the church that was persecuted ili ni kanisa ambalo liliteswa by the roman empire na ile asirikali ya kirumi the people that lived there watu waloishi pale they were frustrated to an extent of forcing them to deny their faith walinyanyazwa kiwango kile cha kulazimishwa kukana imani yao they went through a lot of tribulations walipitia matesa lo mengi and out of that tribulation they remain faithful to their god na katika hayo mapito yote walisalia waaminifu kwa mungu wao brethren when uh, john was speaking about these things wapenzi wakati yohana alikuwa anatoa taarifa ya mambo haya these were the things that he wanted them to know that they are going not to take too long to happen haya ni maneno aliyewataka wafahamu kwamba hayatakawia sana kutukia these are the things that happened haya ni maneno aliyotukia and after this a uh, writing na baada ya maandishi haya we also learn that the church is going right now to face a lot of tribulations tunapata kujua kwamba kanisa sasa hivi nalo linakwenda kupitia mateso lo mengi i have been watching the news nimekuwa nikitisama taarifa and i've been reading so many things from different countries and i've seen how believers are being executed they are being persecuted and some of the churches being burned down 
Na nimekuwa ninasoma pia mengi zaidi kuhusu mataifa ya nje nimeona vile uh, waumini makanisa wanapopitia mengi mpaka makanisa mengine yanachomwa na mambo mengine yasiyopendeza kama hayo Last week I saw seven churches in Kisi being burnt down Ah juma lilopita niliona makanisa saba katika jimbo la Kisi yakiwa yanateketeshwa That is to show you the persecution of the church Ah hiyo ndiko kujulisha kwamba kuteswa kwa kanisa and try to diminish the church so that the devil can exalt himself Na kujaribu kulizusha kanisa na shetani apate kujinua mwenyewe We have seen countries like uh, India Ah tumeona mataifa kama yale ya India We have been talking with our, uh, our brother uh, brothers there. Tumekuwa tunazungumza na ndugu zetu wengine pale. The churches are facing a lot of persecution there in India. Kanisa linapitia mateso mengi sana kule India. So many people are being slain and so many people are being prohibited to speak about Jesus. Watu wengi sana wanachinjwa na wana zuiliwa kuendelea kusungumza kuhusu Yesu but we are praying that the gospel of Jesus can never and will never be stopped with anybody na tunaomba kwamba injili hii ya Yesu Kristo isije ikapata kuzuiliwa na mtu yeyote yule wa Paul in his wisdom Paulo katika hekima yake When he was speaking with Timothy Alipokuwa anazungumza na Timotheo He told Timothy one thing Akamwambia Timotheo jambo moja Those who desire to live a holy life they will suffer so much Kwamba wale watakao tamania watakao fanya maamusi ya kuishi maisha matakatifu basi watateseka mno Those who desire to live the holy life Wale wanao tamania kuishi maisha matakatifu And that is in 2 Peter 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 Hiyo ni Timotheo wa pili mlango um, wa tatu mstari mdogo ule wa 12 He says Yes and all who desire Anasema ndio na wote wanaotamani to live godly in Christ Jesus Kuishi maisha ya kiungu katika Kristo Yesu will suffer persecution Watapitia mateso Why is the church of Smyrna suffering Kwa nini kanisa la Smyrna lina Teseka. because they have decided to live the holy life and out of that living holy life they are facing the persecution na maana wamefanya maamusi ya kutokuishi maisha matakatifu na katika hiyo wanapitia mateso do you know why so many people suffer wajua je kwa nini watu wengi wanateseka paul is reminding them they are going to suffer because they have chosen to live holy life ah paulo anawaambia wanakwenda kuteseka maana umefanya maamusi ya kuishi maisha matakatifu And so living holy life does not guarantee you that you are not going to face persecution Na hivyo kuishi maisha matakatifu basi haikupatii kibali cha kusema hautapitia mateso ama mapito uh, Listen to what uh, Peter says here Kisa kile anachosema Petero hapa First Peter chapter 5 Waraka wa kwanza wa Petero mlango wa 5 And uh, then verse 10 Msari mdogo ule wa 10 But may the God of all grace Lakini naye Bwana mkuu wa neema God of all grace Mungu wa neema zote who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ Aliyetuitia katika uh, utukufu wake wa milele kupitia Yesu Kristo After you have suffered a while baada ya kupitia mapito kwa muda perfect uh, kukamilishwa established na kutibitika strengthened na kutiwa nguvu and settle you na kukutuliza he says after you have suffered anasema baada wewe kupitia mateso a while kwa muda it is just a while ni kwa muda it is not something that is going to take forever ah si kitu kitakachodumu milele this is going to bring perfection in your life basi hiyo inaleta ukamilisho kwa maisha yako he's going to use that persecution to establish his church basi anakwenda kutumia hayo mateso kufanya kanisa lake liwe thabiti true persecution is going to strengthen them kupitia katika mapito anakwenda kuwatia nguvu 
nguvu and again settle them na pia tena kuwafanya kuwa na ule utulifu now listen to what he says na sasa sikiza anachokisema i know your works and tribulation najua matendo yenu na mateso yenu and poverty na umaskini the economic Uh, uchumi situation that was among these people was alarming uh, hali ya kiuchumi ilikuwa katika watu hawa ilikuwa ni hatari mno when we are talking about persecution we are talking about the church will reach a place where even economically things are going to be tough Ah uh, tunaposungumza kuhusu uh, mateso tunazungumzia kiwango ambacho kanisa linafika na hata hali yake ya kiuchumi inakuwa mbaya zaidi. When the economy is going to be affected it affects the church completely. Too. Basi wakati uchumi unakwenda kuathirika na lo kanisa bila shaka linapata kuathirika. But the church must depend on God and God alone for the provisions. Basi kanisa linapaswa kuegemea kumtegemea Mungu peke yake na yeye peke yake kwa sababu ya upeanaji. And so Jesus is saying ah, they were poor but so rich. Yesu anasema walikuwa maskini lakini wao walikuwa tajiri. Very rich in the heart. Wakiwa tajiri katika mioyo. Paul says let the word of God dwell inside you richly. Ah Paulo anasema na neno hili la Mungu likadumu ndani yenu katika uh, utele. The word of God dwelt among them so richly. Ah neno la Mungu lilidumu ndani yao katika utele. So it doesn't matter how the economy of the world has been affected ambacho haijalishi ni kiwango kipi uchumi wa dunia imeathirika how things are rising up and the things are changing each and every day kama vile vitu vinainuka na kubadilika kila siku baada nyingine the church must stop walking by sight but by faith na lo kanisa linapaswa kukoma kutembea kwa namna ya inje lakini kuenenda katika imani when we walk by faith the lord is going to sustain his church because i began by saying he will he himself will build the church atunapotembea katika imani uh, mungu mwenyewe anakwenda kuliwezesha kwa, kwa, kwa kuliwezesha kanisa lake and that poverty was to tell them that they were to depend upon the lord for their provision uh, basi ule umaskini inaashiria tu kwamba watu hawa walipaswa kumtumainia mungu wao kwa ajili ya upeanaji I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jewish and not and they are not Najua dihaka za hawa wanaojiita Wayahudi lakini wao si Wayahudi The people have called the church so many names uh, Watu wameliita kanisa na kulipa majina mengi They blaspheme the church and call pastors with so many names uh, Walidihaki kanisa na kuwaita wachungaji majina They have mocked the servants of God. Basi wamekejeli watumishi wa Mungu. They have nicknamed the servants of God. Wamewapeni majina mengine watumishi wa Mungu. They have said bad things about the servants of God. Habari hiyo njema imesemwa kuhusu watumishi wa Mungu. They are trying to speak these things so that they can intimidate the servants of God those that were called by Jesus. Wanajaribu kuyasema mambo haya ili wadunishe watumishi wa Mungu walioitwa na Yesu Kristo. Yes, those who calls themselves Jews and they are not. Kuna wale wanaojiita Wayahudi bila shaka wao sio. Those who call themselves believers and they are not. Wanaojiita waumini na wao si waumini. Another place says those who call themselves apostles and they are not. Maeneo mengine ama tafsiri nyingine nasema wanaojiita mitume na wao si mitume. So these are the people that claimed to be Jewish people. Basi hawa ndo watu waliojiita uh, Wayahudi lakini wao si Wayahudi. They were not Jewish in the inner circumcision. Ah uh, wao utahirishaji wa ndani but they were jewish by just talking out of their mouth basi walikuwa tu wayahudi kwa maneno ya vinywa vyao and he saying these people will uh, will 
blaspheme you. The church is going to be blasphemed. All these people are preaching because of money. All these people are making wealth. All these people are doing this and this because of themselves. Themselves. The blasphemy of the church is going to increase. The people will see the church as a dirty place. I've seen people saying the church is a place of business. And that is a blasphemy to the Lord. Because the church is the congregation and the assembly of God himself. Where Jesus has assembled his church together. It is an assembly of God, not of a pastor. He told Moses in Old Testament assemble my people together. And when Moses assembled them together he says this is God's assembly now. The church of Christ is God's assembly. And he says where two or three gathers in his name, he's among them. So we will not stop gathering because of the blasphemy of so-called the persecutors. They will give us so many names. They will nickname all the churches with bad names so that the people can run away from fellowship. But those people are the synagogue of Satan. We have the agents of Satan that are fighting the church even today. And I love what Jesus is saying. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Jesus is telling them do not fear anything that you are about to suffer. Paul is reminding Timothy the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of God is going to bring confidence to the church so that they cannot fear what they are after to suffer. So he was preparing the mind of these people so that they can be aware that there is temptation and suffering ahead of them. Do not fear. Do not fear of those things which you are about to suffer. He says, indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison. And some are going to be persecuted in prison. Some are going to be jailed falsely. Some are going to be uh, to, to be humiliated by the, the, the so-called persecutors. And he says that you, the reason of all those things is that 
you be tested. Anasema ninyi sababu ya haya mapito yote mtakayopitia ni kwa sababu ya ninyi tu kujaribiwa. And you will have tribulation 10 days. Na mtapata mateso kwa siku kumi. Be faithful until death. Basi iweni waminifu hadi kifo. And I will give you the crown of life. Na nitawapeni tachi la uzima. Persecution doesn't destroy the church. Basi mateso hayaribu kanisa. But makes the church. Na yanafanya kanisa. God is using persecution to make his church even greater and stronger. Mungu anatumia mateso kulifanya kanisa lake lenye nguvu na uweza zaidi. Persecution is used in the church by Christ to purify the church of God. Mateso yametumiwa na Yesu Kristo ili kulisafisha, kuli fanya kanisa la Mungu liwe safi. Why is God allowing persecution and problems to the church? Kwa nini Mungu anaruhusu shida na matatizo na mateso kwa kanisa? Why is God allowing persecution and problems in my life as an individual? Kwa nini Mungu aruhusu mateso na shida kwa maisha yangu kama mtu binafsi? Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 30 in the good news translation ah uh, midali mlango wa 20 mstari wa 30 katika tafsiri good news translation ya habari njema it says inasema sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways ah uh, kwamba wakati mwingine <laughs> inagarimu mapito yenye machungu uh, ku kubadili njia zetu This is Solomon saying here Suleimani anasema hapa Sometimes it takes painful experience Kwamba wakati mwingine inagarimu mtu kupitia mapito yenye machungu to make us change our ways Kutufanya sisi tukabadili njia zetu Why does God allow persecution and problems and suffering in the life of people Kwa nini Mungu anaruhusu mateso na shida kwa maisha ya watu In the life of people Kwa maisha ya watu Solomon is answering that question Suleimani anajibu swali hilo In Proverbs 20 verse 30 katika midali mlango wa 20 mstari wa 30 Remember I'm using good news translation. Akumbuka anatumia tafsiri ya habari njema. He says sometimes it takes painful experience. God can allow you to experience a painful situation. Ah, Mungu anaweza kuruhusu upitie hali iliyo ya machungu. That painful situation is not to kill you up. Hali hiyo ya machungu sio ya kukuua. That painful situation is not to make you feel and be worried that I'm going to die next day. Basi hali hiyo ya machungu sio ya kukufanya wewe kuwa na wazo na kufikiria kwamba na kwenda kufa siku inayofuata. But is to make you change your ways. Lakini ni kukufanya wewe ubadili njia zako. So at times he allows a painful situation so that man can change his ways. Wakati mwingine anaruhusu hali mapito yaliyo machungu ili mwanadamu apate badili njia zake. My question is are you willing now to change your ways since you have undergone through this? Swali langu kwako mpenzi je sasa unaweza fanya amusi ya kubadili njia zako kwa sababu ya mapito haya umeyapitia not all these problems that you go through there are demons working basi sio haya mapito yote hizi shida zote unazozipitia sio chanzo cha shetani kwa maisha yako but wants you to experience that pain so that you can change your ways lakini naye Mungu anataka upitie hali hiyo ili ukaweze badili njia zako God uses problems to reveal me to reveal who I am ah, Mungu anatumia shida ili anifunue mimi wazi jinsi nilivyo James chapter 1 and verse number 3 message bible ah, Yakobo mlango wa kwanza mstari wa tatu 
Uh, tafsiri ya ujumbe message bible uh, tafsiri ya ujumbe in verse 3 says you know that under pressure uh, anasema unajua katika mstari wa 3 unajua upo katika msukumo you know that under pressure unajua, unajua kuwa chini ka, uh, unajua kuwa chini under pressure your chini. faith life is forced into the open and shows its true color Ah, kwamba imani yako inawekwa kwa uwazi na kuionyesha rangi yake kwa uzuri. For the people to know you are true color. Ili watu wajue rangi zako vizuri. For you to know the color of Harrison. Ili upate jua rangi ya Harrison. For you to know the true color of Pastor Mary. Ili upate kujua rangi ya mchungaji Maria. It is God allowing her to undergo through problem and people will know if this is the real Mary we know. Basi Mungu ataruhusu Maria apitie hali ndo watu wapate kujua kama kweli huyu ndiye Maria tunayemfahamu Problems and persecution and suffering reveals my true color to the people ah, Basi mateso na mapito mateso yote yanasababisha hali yangu ya rangi kueleweka wazi kwa watu And people will uh, know who I really I am because that situation will define a lot in me Maana sasa hiyo itawafanya watu kumchukuni chua jinsi nilivyo maana hali hiyo itaniweka wazi kwa watu when people are undergoing through problem that is the time of backsliding the time of running away and the time they will go and find a solution from the world wakati watu wanapitia ugumu Ah huo ndo unakuwa wakati wao kurudi nyuma kwa uokofu na pia kuenenda zaidi kupata suluhu ya shida walio ndani yake pale katika dunia. So for God to define and to reveal who I am, he allows at times problems in my life so that people can know my true color. Ili Mungu aelezee zaidi mimi ni nani inabidi aruhusu hali katika maisha yangu watu wapate jua rangi yangu vizuri I may be saying oh I'm a child of God and I love God but when persecution and problems and trials comes that is when people will know I have been lying all along Na unajua naweza kuwa nasema nimeokoka na mpenda Mungu lakini Mungu anaporuhusu hali ya mateso na shida kwa maisha hapo ndipo watu watajua mimi ni nani kwa utele Why persecution and suffering to the church Kwa nini mateso na shida kwa kanisa God uses problem and trials to correct the church and to correct me. Mungu anatumia shida na majaribu kanisani kulikosoa kanisa na mimi hapa. And that is Psalms chapter 119. Ana hiyo ni Zaburi mlango wa 119. Verse 71 and 72 Living Bible. Ah Zaburi 119 mstari wa 71 na msari wa 72 living bible a uh, biblia inayoishi some lesson we can only learn through pain and failure ah uh, sasa zingine pia tunajifunza <laughs> kupitia katika machungu na kule kushindwa in pain and in failure some lessons are learned there basi katika machungu na kushindwa pana vitu ambazo watu wanapata kujifunza pale What have you learned in your pain and in your failure Basi ni nini umekwishajifunza wewe katika machungu na kushindwa kwako Do not be afraid of failure Usije ogopa kushindwa But is there something you have learned from that failure Je na kuna kitu umejifunza kwayo katika kushindwa kule Why are we learning the persecution of this church of Smyrna Kwa nini tunajifunza kuteswa kwa kanisa hili la Smyrna because it's so significant to us as a church also maana pia ni la umuhimu sana kwetu kama kanisa pia verse 71 he says msari wa 71 zaburi 19 inasema the suffering you sent was good for me kwamba ma Teso uliyoyatuma yalikuwa mazuri mema kwangu I've never heard anybody saying about <laughs> this statement. <laughs> Sijawahi sikia mtu akielezea kuhusu taarifa hii. The suffering you sent 
was good for me. Anasema mateso uliyoyaachilia uliyoyatuma yalikuwa bora mazuri kwangu. Esida chorumira mbuna mbwange chali chinda imuno. Hizi <laughs> shida ulizotuma katika maisha yangu zilikuwa mzuri mno. For it taught me to pay attention to your principles. Maana ilinituma kuwa mwangalifu katika kanuni zako. God is allowing that situation to get your attention. Hivyo Mungu anaruhusu hizo shida kwa maisha ili apate uh, kupata ile hali yako ya kumshikiza na kusubiria kutoka kwake. At times our attention is so divided in so diverse way. Uh, wakati mwingine uangalifu wetu umegawanyika na to vile tunafikiria ni tofauti sana. And God is speaking and talking to you but you are not getting attention to what he's saying. Na Mungu anazungumza, ananena na wewe haumpi sikio. So he's going to bring a lesson. Basi yeye ataleta ujumbe that will get your attention back. Itakayo kutuma wewe kurejesha so that you can get to listen to him again ili upate msikiza tena so that you can get to hear from him again ili upate sikia kutoka kwake tena so that you can get to understand and learn from him again ili upate kufahamu na kujifunza toka kwake tena the suffering you sent to me was good mateso uliyoyatuma kwangu bwana ni mazuri for it taught me to pay attention what has the suffering and problem you are in taught you mana yamenifundisha kuwa msikifu je shida na hali unazopitia zimekufundisha nini which lesson have you learned from the problem you have been in basi ni lipi ujumbe gani umesoma ama umejifunza kwayo kwa haya ambayo umekuwa unayapitia what are you learning in the, your condition right now basi ni nini unapata kujua ama kujifunza katika hali zako sasa hivi the question is what is my lesson in the problem i'm in basi swali ni hii ya, ni ujumbe upi naosoma katika hali ninayopitia sasa What is my lesson Ujumbe na ujifunza kwayo ni nini Is God looking for my attention Je Mungu anataka apate kupata kujua usikifu ama ufahamu wangu Where is my attention Ni wapi nimeweka mawazo yangu Is my attention divided Je mawazo yangu yamegawanyika God can send a commotion He's only looking for the attention of the church. Mungu anaweza sababisha msongamano ili tu akapate ufahamu wa kanisa. And when people gets back to the attention of God, then he's going to speak and they will hear. Watu watakapofanya maamusi ya kurejea katika fahamu za Mungu basi wataweza kupata kuelewa That is why I said God uses problem to correct me or to correct the church Na ndio sababu nikasema Mungu anatumia shida kunikosoa mimi na pia kulikosoa kanisa Some people have been corrected by God but they have never learned anything Wengine wetu wamekosolewa na Mungu lakini bado hawajaweza pata jifunza lolote They have been corrected with them fellow brothers even pastors and the servants of god they have rejected and god has caused problems in their life so that he can get back their attention wamekosolewa na watu wengine na hata wachungaji na wapendwa wengine hawajawahi shikiza na hivyo bado mungu anataka mtasamo wao verse 72 Msari wa 72 you your law is more valuable to me sheria zako ni za umuhimu mno kwangu i call them the principles of god na zita kanuni za mungu your law is more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver ah basi anasema na sheria yako ni ya udamana kwangu kuliko fedha na dhahabu where you may have silver and gold in plenty unaweza kuwa na dhahabu na fedha katika ule utele but you cannot compare that with the law of god lakini uwezi linganisha hizo fedha na dhahabu na sheria ya mungu he will still correct you and bring you bring you back to his attention baada huyu mungu atakukosoa na kukurejesha katika ufahamu wake why is god using problems and persecution to the church kwa nini mungu angalipo anatumia mateso 
na shida kwa kanisa even to me as an individual hata kwangu mimi kama binafsi joseph is saying something here in genesis 50 verse 20 yusufu anasema jambo hapa katika mwanzo uh, 520 genesis 50 uh, katika mwanzo 50 uh, 20 to 21 msari mdogo wa 20 na 21 god uses problem to protect his church or me Mungu utumia shida kulinda kanisa lake ama mimi binafsi. Verse 20 says, Msari wa 20 anasema, You intended to harm me, mulikusudia kuniweka katika hatari, kuniangamisha, mulinikusudia mabaya. Aha. You intended to harm me, mulikusudia mabaya kwangu, but God intended it for good to accomplish. Naye Mungu akakusudia mema kwayo ili akaweze kamilisha. What is now being done? Kile ambacho sasa hivi kinafanywa. The savings of many lives ukombozi wa maisha ya wengi so in that process of joseph suffering and going through persecution and imprisonment and all these things katika kule kuteswa kwa yusufu ashida na kupelekwa kwa gereza na kupitia hayo yote god used that problem to protect him and protect the dream that was in him mungu alitumia hayo yote kumulinda yeye na pia kulinda ma, uh, ndoto zilizokuwa ndani yake for the saving of many lives kwa sababu ya ukombozi wa maisha ya wengi and he says Nanasema, you intended to harm me mulikusudia mabaya kwangu you know at times the intention of people about your life is so evil wajua wakati mwingine wanayokusudia watu kukusu wewe ni maofu mno but at times god used that bad situation to protect you and take you to where your destiny is na wakati mwingine mungu wetu utumie hiyo hali iliyo mbaya kukulinda na kukufikisha kwenye hatima yako ilipo verse 21 msari wa 20 So then na sasa hivyo don't be afraid msije ogopa i will provide for you and your children mimi nitapeana nitapeana kwako na uh, watoto wako and he uh, and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them na akawahakikishia na kusungumza kwao katika upole now i know why jesus said bless those who persecute you sasa naweza jua sababu iliyomtuma yesu kusema maneno haya mbariki yeye anayekutesa it was not the time of joseph to revenge haikuwa ni wakati wa yusufu kulipisha kisasi or to pay evil to evil ama kulipa maofu kwa maofu but it was a time for him to show kindness to his persecutors lakini ilikuwa ni wakati ulio bora kwake yeye kuona nyesha upole kwa wale wanao mtesa uh, and out of that he showed them kindness by giving them food and everything they needed na katika hayo yote alionyesha uh, upole wake ama upendo wake kwa kuwapeana chakula na vyote walizohitaji remember i'm still speaking about the church of smyrna because um, this is a persecuted church but they need to behave differently ah uh, pokumbuka bado nasungumza kuhusu kanisa la smyrna kanisa ambalo limepitia mateso lakini wanahitaji kuajibikia kwayo kwa utofauti sana they have been blasphemed but instead of holding on to that blasphemy they are doing something reasonable of changing and reminding these people that they are born again. Ah uh, wamedi hakiwa na badala ya wao pia kulipisha kisasi kwa sababu ya ya yale wamefanyiwa wanafanya kwa utofauti mno ili wasije lipisha kisasi kwao. God uses problems and trials and suffering to perfect 
us. Mungu anatumia shida mateso katika maisha yetu ili atukamilishe. And so when you read Romans chapter number 8 and verse 28, na unaposoma kitabu cha Warumi mlango wa 8 mstari mdogo wa 28, it says and we know anasema na tunajua sasa all things work together for good. Kwamba mambo yote ufanyika kwa wema. For those that love God kwa wale wampendao Mungu and they have been called according to the purpose of God. Na wameitwa kulingana na makusudi ya Mungu. And again you can read Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Pia unaweza rejea nyuma Warumi 5 mlango wa 3 kasoma pale. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Warumi mlango wa 5 mstari wa 3 waweza soma pale. I, I, I bless the Lord because of that scripture. Nambariki bwana kwa sababu ya kifungu hicho. And because of uh, that verse I, I just want to read something there. Na kwa sababu ya mstari huo nataka tu kusoma kitu pale. Because there is something that I want you to understand. Maana pana kitu nachotaka upate ufahamu kwayo. I was to read in living bible. Nilikuwa nisome uh, tafsiri ya Biblia inayoishi. But let me read from another translation. Lakini ruhusu nisome katika tafsiri nyingine. Romans 5:3 says and not only that. Na Warumi 5:3 inasema na sio tu katika hayo. But lakini we also glory in tribulations. Pia tunajitukusha katika mateso. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Kwa kujua kwamba mateso ya naza uvumilifu. And perseverance character. Na tabia ya ile kuvumilia. And character hope. Na tumaini la tabia. Now that is why we are saying na ndiyo sababu sasa tunasema, God uses tribulation and suffering to perfect us or to make us mature. Pamba mungu tumia shida na mateso kutukamilisha. To make us mature, to help us develop the character in us. Na kutufanya kukoma, na kufanya tabia hii ya kiungu ikaweze kukua ndani yetu. The church of Smyrna went through this tribulation but they developed the character, they persevered and went through this but they remained in hope. Kanisa la simiri na lilipitia mateso mengi na, 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 na shida nyingi. Lakini walidumu katika tabia ilio njema na kuendelea kuwa na tumaini. Jesus the one that is talking with the church. Yesu yeye anaye linena na kanisa. He speaking a lot of things here. Anasema mambo mengi sana hapa. In the book of Revelation. Katika kitabu cha ufunuo. Now listen to this. Sasa skiza hii. In in Hebrew chapter 5 and verse 8 Katika wa Hebrania mlango wa 5 mstari wa 8 Chapter 5 and verse 8 Wa Hebrania mlango wa 5 mstari wa 8 Jesus learned obedience through his suffering Yesu alijifunza kuwa mtifu katika mateso yake The church can only learn to remain obedient through the suffering of their faith in Christ Jesus. Kanisa linaweza jifunza tu utifu kupitia katika mateso yao kwenye Yesu Kristo ama katika Yesu Kristo. Although Jesus was the son of God, Japo Yesu alikuwa mwana wa Mungu. He learned underline that word he learned obedient. Obedient is something you learn. Ah, ichapo Yesu alikuwa mwana wa Mungu. Lakini alijifunza utiifu. He learned obedience. Alijifunza utiifu. From what he was suffering or undergoing through. Kwa kile ambacho alikuwa na teseka kwayo ama katika mapito yake. So he's telling the church of Smyrna. Ivo anambia kanisa la Smyrna. That I know you, some of you are going to be thrown in, uh, in prison. Najua wengine wetu. Ama wenu mtatupwa katika geresa To be tested of your faith Ili mjaribiwe imanienu To be mocked Mdihakiwe You are going to suffer persecution 
Mtapitia mateso. But do not. Lakini mushije. Do not fear those things. Mushije ogopa mambo hayo. The church must rise up against the spirit of fear and timidity. A kanisa linapaswa kuinuka kinyume na nguvu ya uoga na kugandamizwa. And he says tribulations will come. Na anasema mateso yatakuja. Jesus warned the disciples. Yesu anawatahadarisha wanafunzi. He says in the world you will be hated. Anasema katika dunia mtachukizwa. You will face tribulation. Mtapitia mateso. But be of Lakini iweni wenye imani nzuri. You have to stand. Unapaswa kushinda nakushinda because i have overcome the world maana nimeshinda dunia jesus in his lifetime yesu katika hali yake ya maisha he went through suffering in gethsemane alipitia mateso pale gethsemane and he cried eloi eloi laba sabathan akalia eloi eloi laba satan he was beaten stricken and wounded alipigwa na ku na ku na ku Umizwa. But in that suffering he remained obedient La- doing the will of his father. Lakini katika mateso hayo alisalia mtifu akitenda kutaka kwa Mungu. The church must remain obedient to the one that has called them. Kanisa linapaswa kusalia watifu kwa yeye aliyewaita wao. There will be a lot of hardship and trials and of life akutakuwa na magumu na majaribu na hali ya maisha but out of that hardship and the condition that we are going through let us write down in our books the lessons that we have learned after that temptation na katika hayo mateso na magumu tunayapitia wacha tukaweze kuji uh, tukaweze kusoma Kwa nini tunapitia hayo na kuna akili sababu ya hayo mapito? What is my lesson? Basi sababu yangu ni ipi? What is your lesson? Nayo sababu ama ujumbe unasoma wewe ni upi? What is our lesson as a church? Ah basi ujumbe tunaopata wote kama kanisa ni upi? So that we can be able to say this far we have come surely he is Ebenezer. Ili tukaweze kusema kwa pamoja umbali huu tumefika kwa kweli kabisa ni Ebenezer. Be faithful unto death. Basi iweni waminifu hadi kifo. Don't fear death. Sije ogopa kifo. Be faithful unto death. Iweni waminifu hadi kifo. And I will give you the crown of life. Na nitakupatia taji la uzima. The crown are only awarded to the winners. Ah basi taji uzawadiwa tu kwa wale walo washindi. If you have not won how will the Lord reward? Basi kama wewe hujaibuka mshindi ni vipi Bwana Yesu atakuzawadi? Live a winning life. Ah Ishi maishi nyenye ushindi. The church has won because Jesus won. Kanisa limeshinda kwa sababu Yesu mwenyewe alishinda. And if he won we are going to win. Basi kama yeye Yesu alishinda nasi tutashinda. He who has the ear let him hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church. Basi yeye aliye na sikio na alisikie lile analo analo sema roho wa Mungu kwa kanisa. Some have been persecuted because of their faith in their family. Wengine wameteswa kwa sababu ya imani yao katika jamii. Some have been persecuted because the, hus- the wife is a believer, the husband is not a believer. Wengine wameteswa kwa sababu uh, mke ni muumini na mume wake si muumini. Some have been persecuted because a son has decided to change to come out of religion and follow Jesus and that becomes the part of persecution is how he's going to undergo through wengine wanapitia mateso kwa sababu mwana ameamua kutoka katika mila na desturi na sasa hiyo inafanyika chanzo na sababu ya yeye kupitia mateso yote when jesus refused to preach the message of religion the religion turned against him basi yesu alipofanya maamuzi ya kutokuhubiri ujumbe wa dini basi nalo dini when we refuse to preach the corrupted gospel even as we are preaching right now we are going to be persecuted and people are going to stand against 
pastors and even blasphemers but we are not stopping to speak the truth tunapokoma kuhubiri injili ya ufisadi mpaka sasa hivi tunapohubiri kuna wale watasimama kinyume nasi na kutudi haki na kututisha na hivyo sisi hatutaiacha imani tutasalia wa katika imani hadi hadi mwisho do not fear those things that which are going to happen basi usiogope kwa hayo ambayo yanakwenda tukia stand for your faith simama kwa imani yako and god will see you through na mungu atakuona shalom amani amen we bless the lord for this powerful teaching indeed i can say like pastor lea pastor mam lea she said this is a very powerful teachings and i really love the lord and appreciate the lord how the man of god is bringing the word of god to us concerning churches he has really spoken it severally and i believe that you have received the insight of the word of god because this is the book of revelation praise be to god it is the book of revelation because all these things are already revealed to us so we need more understanding and that is why men and women of god are ready to divide the word of the truth th through the spirit of god in them and that's why today we have pastor harrison who has just laid the foundation firm foundation for the church of god the latter church of today and to us praise be to god so to the man of god i have learned something here concerning the churches you have spoken severally about the churches the church of sardis the church of pagamam the church of theatra and the church of philadelphia the church of laodicea the church of smyrna today and the church i know you will again speak about the church of ephesus and many churches even the church of river of life hallelujah you are speaking about it because this is a revelation now Theatira was the church that John spoke about. But today, I know you are speaking about the Pentecostal church. You are speaking about the River of Life church at his, as it calls itself here at Uruma. You are speaking about the church of today. You are the Paul of today or you are the John of today to speak to the churches. Do you know, I have come to, to, to understand something in the church of today. You have said that when we pass through persecutions, what are we learning? And I was, I don't know if I was laughing or I was, I don't know how to express it. Because for us, the latter church, when somebody is afflicted, that is the time I will know which prophet am I supposed to run to? Which anointing oil is more powerful than another? Which preacher is powerful than another? We start now to compare. We forget to focus unto the Lord. Who was an example to us. He endured persecution. And he said, I won it. I emerged victory for your sake. So we are not again going to, to suffer because Christ has suffered for us. It is just us to believe in Christ who endured all this. But when I look at the latter church, it is the time for us now to know. Ata sikuizi tumesau kuongea kuhusu waganga ni kama tunaona tukiongea kuhusu umuganga itakuwa ni kama ni aibu. Now we are taking men of God kwa kama waganga ya kwamba ni mganga mgani aliyeshupafu kuliko huyu ambaye nimeenda kwake the time of tribulations is the time that men are now looking at the men of the world and they are forgetting about Christ and again another thing i want to say is that i have seen Christ speaking or the angel of god speaking to the churches i have learned it something in the church of laodicea not in the church of Laodicea. It's the church of Philadelphia and the church of Smyrna. There is something that attaches those churches. The church of Smyrna 
is a church that is persecuted, a church that is strengthless. Physically, when you look at that church, a church that is full of tears, it is crying. And when you look at the church of Philadelphia, it is a church that has as little strength as the angel describes it. But when God is looking at these churches, he promises crowns. He promises crowns that these churches, um, go, I, I have your crowns. Hold unto what you have. Hold unto that little strength that you have. Hold unto that persecution in order to endure because there is a crown awaiting for you. Man of God. You know, I have, I, I can call them church members. They always come and say, Pastor, I have passed it through this for so long. Surely it is too long. I have suffered to the end. Who is this witch? Who is the witch of my life? And yet you have said that sometimes whatever we are passing through, it is not all about Satan. God allows it to happen so that we may learn the principles or the decrees of our Lord Jesus Christ. How are pastors going to help their church members? Because church members are running. Because pastor, you cannot help us. You don't have anointing oil. You don't have this power to help us overcome, to help us endure these tribulations. It is like we have forgotten about the crown that is awaiting for us when we endure. Can we encourage the church members or the sheep hold of Christ Jesus in the house or in the assembly of Moses today? One, one of the things that I want to emphasize on is most of the pastors teach their people to depend on them as if they have all the solutions. And Somebody feels headache, he needs to tell pastor. Somebody is coughing, he needs to tell pastor. Somebody is having an issue of drinking tea. Instead of adding sugar, he needs to consult pastor if he should add sugar in tea. Uh, mtu akona shida kumwa na kichwa na itaji muulize mchungaji. Mtu anashida tu ya, ya kukohoa na itaji kumuliza mchungaji. Mtu anashida kuweka sukari kwa chai, bado pia nataka kumuliza mchungaji niweke kiwango gani ya sukari. The people who have never experienced established heart with the principles of God, they will never withstand the pressure of life. Every time they will be running to pastor to seek solution and answers to him every day. Watu ambao hawaja imarika katika kristo yesu. Wakatu wote wakiwa na shida wao watakimbia kwa mchungaji kutafuta suluhu ya shida wanazo pitia. But they need to establish their heart with the principle that can be able to withstand the pressure of life because the pressure will be there. Lakini wanaitaji kujifunza na kueka zile kanuni za mungu zitakazo wawezesha kufaulu katika hali yote ya maisha wanayopitia. When they face the pressure of life wanapopitia mshkumo wa maisha and they go back to the heart that is established with the principles of God na ireje katika ule moyo ambao umeimarika katika kanuni za Mungu they can find answers as per what I am supposed to do at that particular juncture. Basi hapo ndipo wataweza pokea majibu ya yale so the pastor need to teach his members to understand and to receive the word of God and establish the truth in their hearts. But 
pastors fear to teach the truth and to establish the members because if members will not be running to them, what is their work? Basi wachungaji wanaogopa kuwafundisha waumini ukweli wa maneno ya mungu maana waumini wakijua ukweli wa maneno ya mungu watakimbia vipi tena kwa mchungaji kutafuta suluhu. They want to look like they are so busy when they are not even busy. Na wanataka kuonekana wapo katika biyashara mno wakati ya taha wapo katika biyashara. Oh, make appointment with 2,500, make appointment with 1,000, make appointment those are fake and uh, silly things ah uh, fanya 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 mpango wa kutoa shilingi 2000 fanya mpango wa kutoa 1000 ama 500 hizi ni vitu ambazo hasina umuhimu wote that you are booking appointment to go and you are when you go there nothing will be imparted in you you are told how to add sugar uh, in your tea na hizi ni vitu ambazo unatafuta siku unalipia ili uende tu pale hakuna kitu kitafanyika kwako unaambiwa tu vile utachanganya maji na sukari na ifanyike chai some of the sickness you need to go to the hospital baadhi ya magonjwa haya unapaswa kwenda hospitali because we have specialist there maana kuna wale waliohitimu kwa sababu ya shida yako pale stop demonizing everything acha kuifanya kila kitu kuonekana ni shetani when you go to the hospital you are help with there basi unapokimbia hospitali msaada wako upo pale hospitali because god has prepared somebody there who will attend to you maana mungu ametayarisha mtu pale atakaye kuwajibikia atakaye kushughulikia and we have spiritual issues too na pia tuko na yale masuala ya kiroho and when people come to pastor they intend to believe he knows every answer na watu wanakuwa na mazoea kwenda kwa mchungaji wakijua mchungaji ana majibu ya kila kitu wanajua no, we don't have all answers hapana wachungaji hatuna majibu ya kila jambo but we only share by faith what god has imparted in our heart and pray lakini kwa imani tu tunashiriki kile mungu ametia ndani ya mioyo zetu na kuomba but we need to make these people grow and mature up na tunahitaji kuwafanya watu hawa wakaweze kukua na kuwa katika ukomavu to depend on god not to us kuegemea kwa mungu si kwetu wachungaji amen amina amen man of god you have reminded me something again it's like people have forgotten the meaning of meeting together as the church because when you look at a sunday service when people go to church someone even doesn't need to hear doesn't want doesn't have that urge of listening to the word of god at what time is this service ending because i want to see the man of god at what time is this service ending because i have an appointment with the woman of god i want to meet them what is the meaning of the church the, the sunday or a saturday or a sabbath meeting what is the meaning of it i think we have lost the meaning i think the reason why we need to meet together is to have fellowship with god that's why it's called and the fellowship of the holy spirit nafikiri sababu kubwa sana ya sisi kutaka kuja pamoja kujikusanya pamoja ni kuwa tuna ushirika na mungu na ndio sababu tunaambiwa katika maneno ya neema kwamba na ushirika wa roho mtakatifu when we are assembling together we don't assemble by our own way but god has given instruction as per how we need to assemble tunapokuja pamoja tunapojikusanya pamoja hatukuji tu katika njia zetu Uh, tunakuja kulingana na njia ambazo Mungu mwenyewe ametupatia katika kanuni zake. God has given clear instruction on what how to assemble and what should be happening when we assemble together. Mungu amepeana maagizo yoyote yale tunayohitaji ya namna ya kukuja pamoja na ni nini tunapaswa kukifanya tunapokusanyika pamoja so he does not just say we assemble and then we just sit there he has he clarified everything that needs to happen but hasemi tu mje pamoja na mketi tu pale ameelezea ameweka kwa ameweka kwa uwazi tunachopaswa kufanya katika mkusanyiko ule jesus saved all of us yesu alituokoa sote as an individual kama mtu binafsi but he is building a one family that has 
billion and billion and billion of people. So when I am a son, I have to belong to the family. Kwa hivyo, Yesu ametuokoa sisi zote, ametuita mmoja moja na ametaka kutukusanya wote kama mamilioni mamilioni watakaofanyika jamii moja ya Kristo Yesu. And so we become one family. If I'm born uh, among the family, I cannot exclude myself from a family. I need to belong to the family. Ah, basi tunachachika kuwa jamii moja. Na kama nimezaliwa katika ile jamii ya Kristo, basi sipaswi kujiondoa katika ilo jamii na niwe mtu binafsi. Na itaji kudumu katika jamii hiyo ya Kristo Yesu. And that is what they are missing. They are missing fellowship. The people who refuse to come to church, they are missing that fellowship. Na hiyo ndio wanakosa, wanakosa ushirika. Watu wanaokosa kuja kanisani, ah, basi wanakosa ule ushirika. Last month I was teaching. Ah, juma lokuisha, ah, mwezi ulokuisha likuwa nafundisha. There are prayers you can pray as an individual. Kuna maompi fulani unayoweza kuyaomba kama mtu binafsi. And God will hear. Na mungu wa yashikie. But it takes a man and a woman of God also to have a corporate prayer with other people for an finished or an answered prayer to be answered in his life. Na pia inagarimu mtumishu wa munga ama mtu wa mungu pia kukua na maombi ya upamoja kwa sababu ya maombi yale ya meombwa na pado hayaja jibiwa. Because I am not complete minus you. Mana, mimi Harrison sija kamilika bila wewe mchungaji Maria. We are all gifted in a diverse ways to make the body of Christ complete. Wote sisi tumepewa vipawa katika nchia tofauti tofauti na katika vyote hivo tunafanya mwili wa kriso kukamilika. Amen. Amina. Amen. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. And I wanted to say this, that don't refuse to go and meet a man of God because we have said <laughs> you are booking to go and meet a man of God. Go and book. See the man of God. But you understand why you are meeting the man of God. Have that understanding. Don't just go. Hallelujah. Don't just go there because you want to know how many spoons of sugar will you add to your tea. Hallelujah. Perhaps that one. Perhaps you are diabetic. Eh? You need to see the doctor. Go and see the doctor. Go and book also in Nyata Hospital. Book and see the doctor. Hallelujah. Whom God have also given that anointing or power to serve you. Praise be to God. Uh, we are continuing to love the Lord because of his word. Do not say you are contradicting yourselves. We are not. The word of God will remain. Hallelujah. It is yes and amen. If you are doing something that is contrary with the word of God, my sister, my brother, there is no addition or a subtraction to the word of God. It remains to accomplish the revelation that was revealed with the apostles of God. Praise be to God. So we thank God because of today. Hallelujah. The churches, I believe next Sunday you will be finishing by the church of Ephesus. And next Wednesday. Ephesus? Yeah, the church of Ephesus. So, you know the word of God is sharper than the two-edged sword. Kama limekuguza, hata mimi limeneguza, kwa sababu nilikuwa moja wa nikipata shida Nitapiga simu mpaka ngambo. Nitake kujua shida hii natokana na nini. Na usiniambie ni mungu wa meisababisha. Mana mungu hawezi jaribu mwanadamu. Lakini mungu wanasema utunajaribiwa na hisia zetu wenye. Wenyewe. Kwa kweli ye hawezi ya kakutujaribu. Tunajaribiwa. Wenda nimejaribiwa na hisia za ngu mwenyewe. Kwa hivyo lazima kwanza nijichunguze. Kabla sijatafuta daktari wa ulimuengu. Atakai nisaidia. Kwa magonjwa yangu. Na shukuru mungu. Thanks a lot man of God. Asante sana. Naona watu wame respond vizuri katika kazi ya mungu. Na na shukuru ya kwamba. Injili inaendelea. Mbele morina mwai unasema you are tuned. And Candice also you are tuned in. Hallelujah. Jesus speaks through his word. It's true man of God. I've said it. And it's true that Jesus speaks through his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Margaret, you are watching us. Rose Bravo, you are saying you are watching. 
Hallelujah. Somebody had a prayer request here. Rose Nanjala, you said you want God to heal you. Muniombe kuhusu nafsi yangu ama afya yangu ya afya yako. Unaitaji kuombewa, tunaenda kuomba kwa sababu ya afya yako. Pastor Augustine Alumera, you are tuned. Mam Lea, you say powerful teachings. Margaret, unasema bila kusahau, muniweka pastor unieke kwa maombi. Kwa sababu pia akona dislocation ya mkono, lakini daktari. Like now the issue of Margaret, she has a problem with her, hapa inaitua uncle, eh? Lakini ameenda kwa daktari, nilimuambia enda kwa daktari. Akaenda kwa daktari, daktari ya kasema ya kwamba hai yonyeshi ugojwa wote. Now you will know how to deal with it spiritually. Lakini ningeanza kukemea mapepo na obvious angebook kwa kikuja kuona mtumishi wa mungu. Na tuanze kukemea na kupambana na shetani. Lakini ya kienda kwa hospitali daktari ya ona ya kwamba hii ni ishu inaitajika tu kufungwa bandage. Na kisha mfupa urudiana. Kwa hivyo tunge kemea satan. Lakini mfupa haunge urudiana. Na angeenda hospitali na kisha saidike. Ama angekosa kwenda hospitali na aseme huyu pasta hana nguvu ya nani? Ya mungu. Na tena asonge mahadi pengine. Lakini vila meenda daktari ya kangalia kasema ni ukweli ya kwamba hatuoni shida yote tuko sasa na ruhusa ya kukemea shetani na pia asiboku tuko na ruhusa ya kwamba akuje tu atufanye maombi na kisha Mungu akaweze kumponya maana Mungu ndiye anayeponya sio watumishi wa Mungu nasikia uchungu wakati ambapo mtumishi wa Mungu anasema ya kwamba watumishi wachungaji tumekaa kwa maofisi tunajionyesha kuwa sisi ni suluhu ya kila jambo ni Kristo ndio suluhu isho la kila jambo. So if you do not welcome Christ in your issue, you will never receive a solution. Utabaki hivyo, utabaki ukitafuta suluhu na utapata. Kwa hivyo Mungu aweze kutubariki na akatusaidie. Magret tunaenda kupokea uponyaji wako jioni ya leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Hallelujah. Kendi sanasema do not stop. Sijui kama anataka tuongelelee sasa kanisa la river of life. Anasema hamuja maliza. Do not stop. Candice, we are not stopping. We are still continuing with the word of God. Mana hata hatuja anza. Ndiyo tuna, tuna, tuna anza kufanya testing microphone. One, two, one, two. Tuki test microphone. Hatuja anza. Roho wa mungu wakona mambo mengi ya kulisungumuzia kanisa. Na ninaamini ya kwamba tunaendelea kupokea. Na pia kubarikiwa. Mpendwa unapopitia majaribu. Haimanishe kwamba buwana anakusudia mabaya kwako. Anakusudia kuona ya kwamba umeibuka mushindi. Na pia vile ya livyo ibuka mushindi. Pia wewe uwe lesson pia kwa wengine. Uwe funzo pia kwa wengine ya kwamba. Kama Mary alistaimili haya. Mbona mimi ni sistaimili. Kwa sababu Mary alisema kama Christo alistaimili haya. Mbona mimi ni sister Emily. Ndiyo mana Paulo anasema kwamba imitate me but as I imitate who? Christ. Usini imitate mimi peke yangu ati mbona kama Mary alishinda. Ama kama Mary alishindwa. Kama Mary alishindwa, Christo alishinda. Amen. So I thank you so much our viewer and also our listeners wherever you are. Next Wednesday, again, we are here to look at the church of Ephesus, which I know that God, again, is going to give us the deeper insight because the deep calls unto the deep. Desire to go deep and you will call unto the deep and you will understand more about the book of Revelation that many preachers fear to speak about it because the insight is very deep. Unless you go deep, you cannot understand. Amen. So we thank God because of the man of God who is devoted to study and also is devoted to desire to know more and more that the spirit of God is speaking so that he can deliver it to us. Thank you so much man of God. So we want to pray because we do not end our day without prayer for it is sweet hour of prayer. We want to pray and we have people who have been standing 
with these programs each and every Wednesday. We have people that are devoted with their, with their finances, with their money, with all that they have to facilitate today. And I thank God because of you. appreciate the Lord. We are praying for you for the prosperity of the Lord God Almighty to dwell in you richly that you will lack nothing in your lives. Amen. So Pastor Johnston is going to pray for our partners and each and everyone that gives to facilitate for today. And Pastor Harrison is going to pray for the needs of the people. I know perhaps you have not sent your request or your need or your desire, but the Spirit of God knows. He's going to lead the man of God to pray and to commit you unto the able hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, Pastor Johnstone, as you pray for our partners and facilitators. Kwa jina la Yesu, tunakushukuru buwana kwa sababu ya hawa neno lako liliweza kushawishi mio zao wakasema watatushika mkono kwa maompi, kifedha na kwa hali. Bwana tunasema baraka juu yao. Tamuka baraka katika hali yao ya mapato katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Katika mifuko zao hapata kuwa na kukaukiwa. Katika gala zao hapata kuwa na kuishiwa. Wewe ambaye Mungu utakayefanyika mpeanaji, Bwana tunaomba uendelee kuwapatia kulingana na matamanio yao wazidishie maeneo yao ya kazi wapatie kibali na uwawezeshe na uhusiano mzuri watu wote watakao kutanika na wao wape kibali na hata uwaongeze vyeo katika maeneo yao ya kazi panua biashara zao panua kazi ya mikono yao katika jina la Yesu Kristo jamii zao zikawe salama hapana roho wa uharibifu atakaye kuja na kupata nafasi katika maisha yao ni kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na hata kuamini amen names that is above every name we come before you to thank you and to praise your holy name lord we admit that you are always faithful to the life of your people and you always think higher and greater things towards our life. My Father, I want to commit the people who have sent their requests that they are so sick, those who have the dislocation of hand, my Father. I pray that, Lord, through the power and the grace of anointing and healing, may you touch them wherever they are in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how that pain has been persisting, Lord. You are able to deliver them. You are able to heal them. You are able to give them the testimony, my Father, through this prayer. Lord, I declare that any mountain in their life, the mountain of sickness, the mountain of pain, the mountain of shame, the mountain of discouragement, the mountain of curses and hindrance in their life, Lord, we command that mountain to move in the name of Jesus Christ, every mountain of disability, every mountain of impossibility, we rebuke you mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare that let that body be healed. Let those hands be healed. Even those people that are listening and they have not even sent their prayer request, my Father, yes, wherever they are right now, mm. We commit them before your able hand. We pray that, Lord, you are able to see wherever they are. May your spirit of God uh, 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 locate them, my Father. Locate their houses, locate their villages, locate their offices, that you may heal them, that you may touch them, that you may transform them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power of darkness and every spirit of oppression upon their life, every fear and the spirit of death, we cast you to the lake of fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we speak the blood of Jesus everywhere. And Jehovah El Shaddai, let your will be done, my, my Father and my Savior. Whatever that was so difficult, make it so possible to them. 
Lord, we have those people that are seeking for help. They don't know where to go to. Some of them, they are so confused. They have been confused from different places, my father. Some of the people are just seated in the house because they are tired even going to church. Ignite them again. Give them strength again that they may make a decision of getting back to church. And Lord, you are going to speak to them again. We thank you so much because God, you are going to make it possible. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray and believe. Baba Mungu katika jina la mwanao Yesu Kristo bado tunasema ni asante mbele zako tazama ninakabidhi baba waumini wote wala ambao wamekuwa washirika wa siku ya leo iwe ni kwa mitandao ama hapa ndani katika mikono yako mm. naomba kwamba waondoke na baraka zako baba naomba kwamba waishi milele kuona mkono wako wa utukufu juu ya maisha yao na pia nakumbuka kwamba mwaka huu Jehova ulisema ya kwamba watakatifu wataishi kwa imani. Mengi bao na ni yale ambao watu wako wataona. Mengi ni yale ambao baba hata yataondoa wengi katika imani ya Kristo. Mengi ni yale ambao Jehova yatafanya wengi atakuzimia. Lakini walio wako unasema wataishi kwa imani. Wala hawatazimia. Watakuwa kama mlima za yuni. Watafanywa upya tena nguvu zao. Nami nasema ni asante maana wale watu ambao wataona mwisho wa mwaka huu ni wale watu walio na maono ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Na ya baba maono ya watu wako kwa mwaka huu Jehova aliye na maono ya kufanikiwa wacha Mungu ukamfanikishe aliye na maono ya kuinuliwa baba wacha ukamuinue chochote kila ambacho kinaweza kuja kinyume na maono ya watakatifu wako baba tunakipinga na tunakikataa katika jina la Yesu Kristo wacha watoto wako waone ufanisi unaopatikana ndani ya Kristo maana neno lako linasema pasipo na maono watu huangamia wako na maono ya kuona mwili wa Kristo ukijengeka wako na maono baba ya kuona kanisa likiinuliwa wako na maono ya kuona ya kwamba baba ufifio umeanzia tena katika taifa la Kenya na umezambaa katika dunia yote wako na maono ya kuona ya kwamba injili inafika mbali wako na Naona Jehova ya kusimamisha kazi yako. Nami na naomba kwamba Mungu ukapate kuinua. Yeyote atakaye simama baba na ushirika. Yeyote atakaye simama na madhabahu yanayonena Mungu wa kweli. Tunaomba ya kwamba Mungu unaenda kuinua na unaenda kuahimiza na kuatia nguvu. Jina lako libarikiwe na jina lako linuliwe. Na haswa tunaomba baba ya kwamba madhabahu yote yasiyo nena kuhusu Kristo wa kweli baba unaenda kuyavunja na inua dhabau lako inua dhabau linalokiri Kristo inua dhabau baba katika taifa la Kenya litakalo tutetea hata katika miaka zijazo litakalo sungumza mema kwa ajili ya watoto wetu baba katika vizazi elfu moja vinavyokuja Jehova maana bila dhabau lako kunena mema Yesu tutakuwa wapi hatutaweza bila wewe kinywa chako baba kikasikike sauti yako ikaheshimiwe asante Mungu mwaminifu na ni kwako Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini thank you our viewers we thank you and we believe that next wednesday you will again tune in for this powerful sermon about the churches and god is going to bless you and lift you So as we wind up, I want us to share the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. In the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Till we meet again next Wednesday. God bless you.